this is Paul Check. Happy New Year! Happy 2015! Yay, that's cool. See, two, zero, one is three. Two, zero, one, three, five is eight. Woo! Eight uh, numerically refers to self-reflection. The two halves of zero interacting with each other. Self looking at self. I, myself, looking at the capital S-E-L-F, the rest of me, humanity, the world, the solar system, the universe, all of it, the cosmos. So, hey, if the universe can create itself out of pure potential, in all its grandeur, and we are that, I think that would be our first tip that we ourselves are capable of acting from the center of our own universe and creating things that we feel are beautiful and invigorating and exciting and motivating in our own lives. And that's what the purpose of having a dream is. And since we're beginning a new year, and our theme at the Institute this month is dream, effective dream weaving, how to create what you want in your life, I thought today I would talk a little bit about a common, common problem. As a guy who's coached a lot of people through challenges with building their dreams, experiencing their dreams, uh, everything related to it, I can tell you that the issue of neurosis is a very, very common challenge. Neurosis is a word that's used a lot, but very few people actually understand the meanings, one of which is that there's different meanings in different professions or contexts. They're all really the same thing, but said different ways. So what I want to do today is highlight neurosis from a Western perspective and from a Buddhist perspective. So we'll take a couple of different looks at it. Um, but really my goal today is to show you that challenges building your dreams are as common as white bread. The beauty of it is, is that by working through the challenges to create any worthy dream, you are actually in the ultimate spiritual practice. You're in the ultimate practice of creating something bigger than yourself as you perceive yourself to be now. In other words, the person who creates their dream has somehow grown in the process of creating the dream just like no mother can have a child and raise it without becoming more of a human being, more of a mother, and more awake through the process. It's, you know, even if you don't think she's awake, she's more awakened than she was because you can't have a dream that does not require you to go beyond yourself. If you do, it's not a dream. It's probably just a task like taking out the garbage. So let's look a little bit into this issue of neurosis and what it is. First, I'm going to give you Carl Jung's definition, of which he has several, but I'll use this one. Carl Jung says neurosis is a word used to describe a large potential number of symptoms that emerge when a person is not facing a task that they inherently know is essential at this time in their life. So, for example, if you're married to somebody or you're in a relationship, either personal or professional, such as working at a job, and something inside you has been telling you this isn't working, this isn't going to work, and you know it's not supposed to work because it's time to move on, and you stay in the relationship for any number of reasons, you're very likely to begin to have symptoms such as high blood pressure, elevated heart rate, shortness of breathing, uh, Symptoms in the chest that uh, mirror a heart attack, but or what it's called angina pectoris, but you don't have the actual heart disease. Um, and almost every other symptom you can imagine, from digestive disorders to constipation to vacillating from constipation and diarrhea to adrenal fatigue, all these things are the side effects of not confronting the task that either we inherently know ourselves from our own experience and observation of ourselves in relationship to self and other, or it is the impulse of your soul telling you, get out of this job. You've always wanted to fly an airplane, go take pilot's lessons and begin now before you rot. It might be that you want to move. Maybe you live somewhere cold and wet and you want to be somewhere warm and every time it rains you feel like you're dying but you stay there. So that's an example of not 
fulfilling the task that you know is in front of you, either by your own accord or by the impulse of your soul, the consciousness within you. Next, <clears throat> Joseph Campbell, in one of his many lectures that I've studied, too many to remember, gave a definition of neuros neurosis that I think is quite potent. He said, the neurotic individual is one who acts irresponsibly when they should be acting responsibly. So there you see is a different context. It really points to the same thing, but it's said in a very different way. The neurotic individual is one who acts irresponsibly when they should be acting responsibly. For example, if you go out and start doing a pile of psychedelics and think that you have now are God realized or whatever it might be, and you start um, not fulfilling obligations to yourself, to your family ones, or to people on your dream team that you have commitments to, you can become like the yogi that gets a taste of meditation and walks away to live in the mountains but leaves the family behind. Classic Siddhartha case. And that's really sort of a cop-out on the greatest spiritual growth potential there is, and that's your life itself. Next, we're going to take a look at a Buddhist definition. So I gave you Carl Jung's definition, I gave you Joseph Campbell's definition, we call those Western. Now we're going to look at uh, Chogyam Trung uh, <laughs> Trungpa, it's hard to say some of these Buddhist names, Chogyam Trungpa, and he was a Buddhist master, very, very interesting guy. If you go on Netflix and look up the uh, documentary called Crazy Wisdom by Chogyam Trungpa, watch it, it's very good, very, very interesting. In his book, Dharma Art, he gives the definition that I will now share with you. And if you're interested in the philosophy of art and the production of art and the process of being an artist, this is quite a comprehensive book. You might find it very, very interesting. It's a very different approach than a Western approach. So now, since we're talking about dream weaving, we're going to look at um, Chogyam Trungpa's definition of neurosis and say, well, how might this indicate ways that we're getting in the way of the creation of our own dreams so we're not walking around poor me and being pissed off at other people who are successful and living their dreams or being jealous, which is very, very common. So he defines neurosis as that state of mind which fixates and, hold on to, and holds on to things. That state of mind which fixates and holds on to things. Remember, anytime you're going to create a dream, by definition, a dream is something that you're in the process of creating. So fixation and dream creating are opposite qualities. To fixate means I'm going to hold still and not move and do today what I did yesterday. But to dream means every day is a day at the beach on a surfboard and you don't know what's coming in until you're there and you got to be ready for anything from sharks to the greatest waves of your life and that's what it means to surf and that's also what it means to effectively weave our dreams. So neurosis then is a state of mind which fixates and holds on to things. Now Trungpa breaks neurosis down into three categories. Category one is passion, which he says is gooey and too much glue. Now, he's referring to passion from the state of a neurotic individual. He's not saying passion's bad. But if a person's neurotic, then passion becomes gooey, which is someone who comes like a dog licking your legs. Says, oh, you're not going to, I'm going to make a million dollars next year. I'm going to do this. And they read 20 books, and then a month later, they're sitting there on their bed thinking they need to go to a doctor to get antidepressants because nothing's changed in their life. So that kind of passion is also sometimes what we refer to as manic behavior. It's also the behavior of a fanatic. How many fanatics about helping save the world or this or that are blabbing a lot on the internet, but aren't doing a damn thing in their lives to make a change, including healing the world that they own called themselves. So this is an example of neurosis, passion that does not contribute to effectively managing yourself and or your relationships on your dream team, because it's gooey and it acts like glue. Next is aggression, which he says is too sharp, too threatening, and too rejecting. 
most of us, in my experience, that are aggressive come from childhoods where we were wounded and haven't recovered yet. So we can develop an aggressive edge on us. I'm one of those people who has been working my whole lifetime to calm the aggression that the child in me had to generate in order to effectively survive the environment and navigate the environment. And when you have too much aggression in you relative to the context of the moment, then you run into a lot of problems on your dream team in working with people, in having functional relationships. No dream can be made alone. You can begin it as a seed in your head, but there's always other people involved. Somebody's making something that you need. Somebody's delivering something you need. Somebody's uh, doing some kind of research, some kind of support, and maybe it's your partner who's feeding you at night and giving you the love and support you need to fulfill that dream. So there's always going to be problems on a dream team team if we have a neurotic expression of anger. As he says beautifully, too sharp, too threatening, and rejecting. Next is ignorance, which is a state of stupor that cannot discriminate left from right or black from white. This, this is bordering on apathy. So this, is a, this definition could be loosely exchanged with apathy, which means I don't care. This is not honest ignorance. Many of us start on dreams. I start dreams all the time that I need to do research and I got to talk to people and I got to figure out, okay, who's a master at this? How can I figure out how to do that quickly? If I'm going to read 10 books, whose book should I read? Um, those types of investigations are all necessary parts of investigating and gaining the knowledge. So I'm saying it's not absolutely not at all unusual for anyone to be ignorant on either the entirety of how to make their dream or key components of how to make the dream. You may want to build a house and you may know how to paint the inside of a house, but you may not know how to wire a house, plumb a house, or dig a foundation, etc. So someone wanting to build a house as their dream may be in a state of clarity as to I need to get training in the following areas and I need to hire the following people. But somebody in this state of ignorance says, oh, I'd love to have a house, but then spends 10 minutes telling themselves all the reasons why they could never do it. Okay, that's the kind of ignorance that's related to a neurotic or neurosis. Okay, now we, we have taken a nice little tour of a Western and Eastern philosophy of neurosis and I think most of you listening would agree that these problems are as common as breath in our culture. We talk about the need for the world to heal and you've got lots and lots of people out there uh, lecturing on the importance of making these changes now. Um, too many to even list, from Ken Wilber to Bruce Lipton to, you know, Deepak Chopra, Fred Allen Wolf, uh, you know, every, all the documentaries, I mean, we're loaded with it. We all know that it's time to make a change. But we must remember that many of us that have these neurotic tendencies are trapped in this desire to fit in they're still dealing with an unhealed child in themselves. So they still need to make sure they don't upset mommy or daddy, or they still need to make sure that they don't practice, live, say, or do things that go against the family religion or the religion that they've been indoctrinated into. So there's a, a, a lot of neurosis created by trying to be somebody that you were conditioned to be, but your soul knows that you're not destined to be. These are very, very common things. So, Trungpa also gives this definition of culture. He says, culture is made of a lot of people all behaving the same way. In PPS Success Mastery Training, I talk about the center of gravity of society. It's low. The average person's consciousness really hasn't risen too much beyond their sexual urge and their need for self-aggrandizement or self-approval. Um, and or look at me behavior, which is okay, but we got a long ways to go, you know, to get <clears throat> across that rainbow bridge. 
So this is your chance to really be proof of evolution, to really go out there and demonstrate to yourself that spirit does listen and that there is the potential to create universes which can be activated and in your own life is the potential to create the universe of your own dream in your own life. And I know for sure this works because I've done it myself many, many times. I'm standing in one of my dreams right now talking to you. So my tips. Remember the ABCs of dream creation go backwards. First, you've got to get clear. Your energy has to be focused to get a task done. If you try to do five tasks at once, you will move 20% as fast on any given task as you would if you just focused on one task. So we, we need to really spend the time in meditation and exploration to get clear on, do we really want to do this? And do, would we love creating our dream and enduring those natural challenges and pains more than we would love to continue to endure the pains that led us to think, I need a new way of being? Right? So that's the question. So clarity is critical. Two is belief. You can have all the clarity in the world, but if you don't believe you can build the house, no matter how good your plans are, the house isn't going to go up. So when it comes to belief, if there's belief challenges, but there's clarity, then my advice is find a mentor, someone who has skill, who can nurture you through the challenges that go with building any dream. That's one of the reasons the entire check education program has switched over to a university style program with a mentoring system built into it so we can help people through those natural challenges. You can learn more about that at checkinstitute.com. <clears throat> the pain teacher is the, is the name of the inner process that I've created for my own teachings to describe when our negative voice or our woulda, shoulda, coulda voice speaks up to show us where our negative programming is. So whenever we have problems in belief, you usually hear voices like, I'm not good enough, I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not smart enough, etc. Well, remember, wherever you have one of those negative beliefs, you also have the other side of it. I'm not good enough, if nothing else, if I am good enough doesn't work for you honestly, then remember you always have the potential. We all have the potential because the universe itself is emergent of potential, therefore everything in it must also be. So I'm not good enough turns over to I have the potential to be good enough and based on the clarity I have, I will feel good enough when I take the following courses or spend time with the following mentor or mentors. Okay, So the pain teacher is the negative expression that is antagonistic to our dream, that becomes a gift because it makes us aware of where our unconscious mind is negating what we perceive to be our conscious thoughts. And since our conscious thoughts are flashes in the pain, the unconscious mind works 24-7. It's a good idea to embody the, the pain teacher and not drug it and avoid it because it's actually teaching you how to become enlightened, funny enough. <laughs> Don't drug that, okay? Three is action. We all have to take action, right? Thinking about going to the gym and being fit doesn't get you fit. Watching people do it on television doesn't get you fit. Okay, so setting action is very much oriented around effective goal setting, which I teach in PPS Success Mastery Lesson 3, both process goals and outcome goals, to show you how to make it step by step in the creation of any project or dream. And I'm sure you can imagine I've created a lot of projects and, and helped a lot of people live a lot of dreams. So those lessons are the synthesis. The most important PPS lessons to begin with are lesson two, well, excuse me, lesson one, how to find and live your legacy, how to determine what your dream is and what's stopping you. Two, how to master the use of your own mind and manage yourself effectively. And three, how to set goals effectively. So when it comes to taking action, the most important thing is for Dr. Balance. Balancing the amount of quiet and introspection with movement, outward going thinking or extraception, uh, if you will, putting your senses outward, um, doing things out there, Dr. Movement, doing things in here, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Happiness, what is it that I'm choosing, and Dr. Diet, what am I consuming to embody those choices? 
So once we have an understanding of the four doctors, quiet, diet, movement, and happiness, which I clearly explain in this ebook with videos, audios, and slideshows, um, we're on the way. My book here, The Last Four Doctors You'll Ever Need, How to Get Healthy Now, has a system of questionnaires to help you figure out where you need to begin healing and what to do about it, which you can start immediately. And it's a very, very clear, highly individualized plan that has worked for a lot of people in the world. I've sold over 120,000 copies of the book now with no publisher. So the word's out. <laughs> if you enjoy this type of work and want to learn how to do this more deeply for your own healing and possibly become a holistic lifestyle coach, go to the Czech Institute, C-H-E-K Institute.com and look into the Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1 training program, which is a great three-day program we teach all over the world. So in conclusion then, our neurotic symptoms are often a symptom of us avoiding an essential task that we know we need to face either because we're aware of it intellectually or our soul is calling us to another task. Neurosis appears when we act irresponsibly relative to our stated dream and what we need to live fully uh, when we should be acting responsibly. And neurosis in dream building shows up as imbalanced passion, imbalanced aggression, and ignorance that isn't uh, used as an impetus to grow, but as, as, as an excuse to not grow. Again, Dharma Art, very interesting book by Chogyam Trungpa, and uh, that name's hard for me to pronounce. Hope you enjoyed our talk today. I'll look forward to sharing something with you next week or as soon as I can. Have a great time building your dreams. I'm right there with you. Bye-bye.